Ladies and gentlemen, I am Sid Alpha. And before we get started, I want to make one thing abundantly clear. Please do not harass the YouTuber that is the subject of this response video. While he is coming at this topic from a position of flawed and incorrect logic, his heart is in the right place and he doesn't deserve a horde of spiteful people coming down on his head. I will post a link to his video down in the description below, but I ask you in all seriousness to please be more respectful to him than he has been to me. So I suppose I should start off by telling you what this is all about. Well, it was brought to my attention earlier this evening that a smaller YouTuber that goes by the Bad Cop 69 released a video a little over a week ago titled Sid Alpha is a Fake, in which he attacks me on both a professional and personal level. Now, in that video, he also directly called me out to answer his allegations. And normally I try to live by the statement made by Mark Twain, never argue with a fool, onlookers may not be able to tell the difference. But every once in a while, I resort to another sentiment by the same great man that goes, answer a fool according to his folly, lest he be wise in his own conceit. Now, I have in the past gone through the trouble of releasing a video response when I thought the topic at hand could serve to benefit my viewers as opposed to just assuaging my own gigantic ego. I even took a week and a half off from producing any form of video so I could regain some perspective because that same gigantic ego was doing more harm than good and I was losing sight of what was important, namely all of you. Now, as I said, I will post a link to his video down below, but I will not be showcasing his video here as I don't really think that would be fair to him to offer a full dissection of his 37 minute long video. It would also be far too much work as he did go off on several long tangents, but as is important in cases like these and despite how very badly I want to, I will do my best to avoid directly attacking the bad cop 69. I know that he did come at me rather hard in his video, but I understand his position in frustration. He is objectively wrong, but at the end of the day, he believes he is right, and if he was correct, then he would be fully justified in his feelings of dismay, betrayal, anger, and frustration. No, instead of fighting fire with fire, as it were, I'll instead discuss his talking points about me specifically. Now, one of the major points of contention is his firm belief that I'm somehow raising funds for the GDC. I'm not. It's really that simple. The Game Developer Convention is one of the largest conventions within the gaming industry, and they really don't need, let alone accept or offer fundraising to be done in their name, or at least if they do, I've never heard of it, and no Google search I conducted showed anything in that regard. No, what was happening was I was live streaming with a fundraising goal to help pay for travel, lodging, and food expenses for me to be able to attend the GDC. Now, that money would be going to airlines, hotels, and restaurants. Not a single penny of it would have gone to the GDC in any way, shape, or form. And I did raise a whopping $31, so lucky for me, several things fell into place that would allow me to attend. Now, the reason for the fundraising for the trip was because I'd made the assumption, being I hadn't heard back from the GDC, that I would not be granted a press pass to the event, which means I would be forced to pay for one, and in order for me to do my job, I would need an all-access pass, which costs a ludicrous $2,300. A couple that with the extreme expenses over the course of the past several months due to my vehicle deciding to self-destruct and the extreme amounts of medical bills incurred by my daughter's continued physical health issues in November, December, and January were extremely tight months and my reserves had become completely exhausted. I would be able to pay for the ticket, but doing so would leave me unable to pay for a hotel or an airline ticket to say nothing of food. However, they did finally respond and are providing me with a press pass, so I will be able to attend the conference without actually paying the GDC a single red cent. That mixed with a very healthy tax return and the continued generosity of my Patreon supporters means that I'm no longer completely flat broke and I'm able to cover living expenses while I'm down there. But to accuse me of fundraising for the GDC is, as I've already explained to this person more than once, completely false by every single definition of the term. And yet this person persists on basing a good 80% of his argument against me squarely on that false premise. Now let me say this again in no uncertain terms. I have not, will not, cannot raise funds for the GDC. It's a literal impossibility, and even if by some stretch of the imagination the GDC did allow that sort of thing, I still wouldn't do it. It's really just that simple. Now next is this person's argument against my making use of Overwatch footage within my videos, although I'm actually more surprised he never brought up my continued use of Star Wars Battlefront 2 EA footage. His argument here is that my purchasing Overwatch or any other game with loot boxes in it and showcasing it on my channel is potentially generating sales and is a failure on my part to practice what I preach. 
And his statement to my assertion that using game footage of the game that is being discussed is pertinent to the topic at hand is, as he put it, pure bullshit. But unfortunately, once again, he's not correct. You see, all of our videos, even the video that the Bad Cop 69 made that is our topic here, contain gameplay footage, which is fine. Channels like mine have little to nothing to fear from developers respectful of the law because of fair use exemption for videos that are critical commentary or news-related content. However, it's never as cut and dry as all that. You see, his video uses a lot of in-game footage from a Star Trek video game. Nowhere in his videos he discussing Star Trek, offering any form of critique on the game, nor is he offering critical commentary in regards to the video game being shown. By all rights, his video would not be covered under fair use exemption, and if that game's developer or publisher were so inclined, they would be well within their legal right to file a DMCA strike on his video based on those grounds. So while I am showcasing gameplay footage of Overwatch, I'm discussing the game and am, or will be at least, discussing loot boxes within the context of the game Overwatch, so I would have at least a peripheral defense for fair use exemption. It's questionable whether it would hold up in a court of law as fair use and the DMCA are far more nuanced and full of shades of gray than most other laws out there, but still, I refuse to directly open myself up to legal action from a video game developer whose footage I might use instead of Overwatch or Battlefront 2 EA, strictly because I refuse to even allow the possibility that my horrendously bad gameplay might somehow entice someone to buy the game. Also, do you really think it a good idea for me to forge the association of a good game's gameplay footage and Overwatch loot boxes in someone's mind? No, I don't think that would be a very good thing to do at all. Also, in regards to gameplay of these games, yes, I purchase them. I make no qualms whatsoever about that. I spend my money to be able to investigate these games and learn from them and what they're about to be able to relate that information to my viewers. Information is ammunition. Much the same principle of thinking is the driving factor behind my trip to the GDC this year, to gather information to be able to provide to all of you to the best of my ability and limited funds. You cannot honestly expect me or anyone else to think that I would be able to render accurate information on the business models within these games without conducting research and being able to obtain first-hand information, do you? Well, this person seemingly prides himself on his own research capabilities, as do I. Granted, I will fully admit that sometimes I do not go as in-depth as he or even myself would like. Now, the reason for that is there really aren't enough hours in the day. This is also why I am so very often late to the party, as he put it. I work 12 plus hours a day at my day job. I'm a father of a 13-year-old girl, and I have a YouTube channel. Sometimes I do enjoy sleeping more than four hours a night, which means, yes, sometimes I'm late to the party, as it were. Perhaps someday I might be able to go full-time with my channel, and if that ever happens, then hopefully those instances will decrease. But also, there's the term, better late than never. I do the best that I can, and if that's not good enough for you, you have your own YouTube channel. You are fully capable of being that voice that you've been waiting so long for. In fact, I strongly urge you to be that voice. Speak out against the terrible things within the gaming industry. I hope that you do, and I hope you're extremely successful at it. That's very much what drove me to start up my channel what feels like an eternity ago, even though it's only been a couple of years. The fact of the matter with showing gameplay like Overwatch and Battlefront 2 EA is that it is pertinent to what's being discussed. It would be inappropriate and even unfair to showcase an innocent game while discussing those topics, while at the same time be a potential, as you have to be careful with that legalese so you have to specify potential, but a potential copyright violation. Also, YouTube is not radio. It is a visual format. In it, we are offered the unique ability to show and tell, not just tell. And as I was saying before, we, as public personalities relating information to our viewers, have to be speaking from an informed position. And sometimes that means spending money on a game whose monetization practices you don't agree with. The point is providing the information to our viewers so they can decide what they choose to do with that information. It's not up to us to decide for them. It's up to us to provide them with the data to the best of our abilities and also to provide our opinions as people and as gamers. Offering our points of view can be extremely valuable to people to help them process the information and it will ultimately benefit them. Yes, we can persuade one way or another and I have always advocated not relying on my voice alone when determining whether or not to purchase a game. I've always encouraged people to gather as much information as they can from a wide variety of sources because it's that information that is of the ultimate value. So yes, I buy the games. 
I do so in order to be able to provide that information to my viewers. Sun Tzu said, If you know the enemy and know yourself, you need not fear the result of a hundred battles. If you know yourself but not the enemy, for every victory gained, you will also suffer a defeat. If you know neither the enemy nor yourself, you will succumb in every battle. Knowledge is power, whether it be knowledge of self, knowledge of an enemy or opponent, or knowledge of a product. It all boils down to consumer advocacy, and while the bad cop 69 calls me a coward for not addressing the particular elephant in the room and states that it is a very clear conflict of interest for me to be one of the YouTube personalities fighting against loot boxes while seemingly promoting one of them through gameplay, it is all about maintaining topical associations and about providing information. You can't know, really know, what a game's monetizations are about or its gameplay or its stability sight unseen. If I were to outright avoid these games while still continuing to talk about them, all I would be doing is parroting someone else's words and opinions, not generating my own from a basis of an informed standing. It's the lot in life of the games critic to play crappy games or games with a narrative or monetization aspect they don't necessarily agree with, and to be able to provide both cold hard facts and their own opinions to their viewers, listeners, or readers. It's also sometimes our lot in life to go to a gaming convention like the GDC knowing full well that you will come across elements you don't like, don't agree with, or find outright distasteful. It's also knowing that while you can cherry pick all day, there will be some good aspects to come out of that convention as well. There will be both good and bad, but it's all information to be discussed and reported on. I know that the bad cop 69 is not alone in his feelings of frustration and seemingly betrayal over my intent to go to the GDC, and that's fine. But if you wish to argue against me and my decisions, please at least do both your viewers and mine the courtesy of getting your facts straight, because they are the ones that matter. Not you, not me. Them. And as all of you are the ones that matter, please do feel free to let me know what you think down in the comments below, and I would remind everyone once again Please be respectful if you go over to his video. If you choose to post a comment, please don't harass him. He doesn't deserve it. And once again, ladies and gentlemen, I am Sid Alpha, and I'll see you next time. If you like what I do on this channel and would like to see the channel go full time, consider donating in on Patreon or PayPal, as well as hitting that subscribe button and following me on social media. Links to everything are in the description down below.